Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Rapture Recap. I'm Jalen Barnes. This is my lovely wife, Casey. We're so happy to have you with us once again. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, Pastor Dell and Pastor Diana was talking about um, the art of spiritual containment. That was the name of the mm -hmm. lesson today, the art of spiritual containment. And just to give a quick overview, that's what a recap is. Um, he was talking about the distractions that the enemy brings in our yeah. lives to keep us contained mm -hmm. um, as Christians, as, as believers. And how that we spend a lot of time not focused on what the main purpose of our born again experience mm -hmm. is about. Mm -hmm. And that is pre the preaching of the gospel. Oh. See, the enemy or Satan... He really doesn't care that you're born again. Yeah. Um, now, he would love it if you weren't born again. Mm -hmm. I mean, but since he can't stop you mm -hmm. from receiving Christ, mm -hmm. what he will do is he will get you distracted yep. from the commission. And that mm -hmm. is the preaching of the gospel. Yep. And he does this by keeping us in a position of concern about our lives. Yep. And Pastor went to... Um, um, Mark 16, verse 15, and that's the one that says, take no thought. Is that the one? Oh, that's Mark 6. Matthew 6. Oh, Matthew 6. I'm sorry. Matthew 6, 25. Matthew 6, 25. Mm -hmm. Take no thought. What Matthew, you shall eat, Matthew what you shall 25, drink. take no thought for what you should eat, mm -hmm. what you should drink, what you should wear, and these things. But how many of us know that as quote-unquote believers, we take a lot of thought. Mm -hmm. We go to work, we do a nine-to-five, and we work that job like a person who doesn't have the covenant of a new birth. Um, and we let that become our source, our job, our source instead of God. Well, what the devil was planning to do with this need to take thought was to contain us. To contain us. Exactly. So that our focus is not on mm -hmm. the kingdom. And Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things that you were previously taking mm -hmm. thought for before you were in the kingdom, um, now you no longer uh, have to take thought for mm -hmm. that. It will be provided for you. God's going to provide it. Because uh, something very powerful Dr. David said was, you set your life up. The average person sets their life up around their source. Mm -hmm, exactly. So That was a powerful statement yeah, right there. If your job is your source, if your boss man is your source, then everything you do, you're going you're gonna to gear everything around that. What vacations you take or don't take, whether or not you go to church, what, how much time you spend with your family, what ministry you do or don't do, it's all revolved around what your job allows you to do mm -hmm. because that's your source and you need it and it's most important because it provides for your needs. But if God is your source, you're going to revolve all your life around what he, as your boss, needs mm -hmm. for you to exactly. do. So if he needs you to do the ministry, that's going to be your focus because he's the one providing for you. Mm -hmm. He's your source. He told you, you do the work that I tell you to do. You do the assignment I gave you, then I'll provide all these things for you. Exactly. And the devil has very uh, uh, deceptively and very strategically yes. used the common needs that everyone just thinks is just normal. Like it's just normal for you to have these needs mm -hmm. and to have to take thought for all these things to try to provide for your family. But really it was a plan of the adversary to get us all focused and off track because God's focus is souls. Because it was never God's design for us to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. He is our source. He designed for, for him to do that so that we can focus on the preaching of the gospel. Yeah, He made it very clear what the preaching of the gospel is. And that was in Mark uh, chapter 16, verse yeah, that's 15. The, yeah, yeah, Mark that 16. is the Great Commission, mm -hmm. as we call it, where he told us very clearly uh, through, the, we, through him telling his disciples, but also telling us here in the future what we're supposed to do. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mm -hmm. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So it's very clear what seeking the kingdom is. This was it right here. This is what the Lord intended for us. Well, let's not, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm crossing my I'm grabbing his Bible. But let's not rush over that real quick. But because I think Pastor really brought out that, you know, in verse 16, it said, He that believeth. And verse 17, it said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. So that means you can be born again and not believe. But he's talking mm -hmm. to the body of Christ here. Mm -hmm. You can be born again and not believe. You can be sure. so contained by the enemy that you're not walking in belief because if we believe we will be seeing signs wonders and miracles happening on a regular basis mm -hmm. so if you're not seeing these manifestations in your life you have to ask yourself 
do I believe? That's true. And I know that we might you might be saying, well, you know, you don't have to see that every day. That's just that's just kind of impossible, or well, that's just too much. It don't take all of that. But the problem is, we've been so numb because we've been so contained in the in, our, in the way we live that we're not. Our minds don't even fathom seeing signs, wonders, mm -hmm. and miracles every day of our lives. Mm -hmm. We can't even fathom this idea that I don't have to ever be concerned with my needs. That I can wake up every day knowing that everything that I could possibly need mm -hmm. is already met. Yeah. That's a sure sign that we've been contained. Yeah. It, it, it's slavery, basically. Mm -hmm. It's that idea that even though... You can walk across the street. If I've been contained and, and made to believe that I can't, then you won't. Then go. You won't. And that's the thing. You won't <laughs> go. And that's how scripture begins. Go. Yeah. Go ye into all the world. Go. So how do you know if you believe these things? You may mentally assent to it. Maybe you've been in a church where you've seen signs, wonders, mm -hmm. and miracles. You've heard of other people doing it throughout history. Not just Jesus, but other disciples and apostles, modern and ancient. But do you believe? The way you know, remember James said, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So what's the work that says that you believe this? You go. And if you don't go, then that's a sure sign that you don't believe that this would happen. Because mm -hmm. it said these signs are going to follow you once you go. See, that takes the pressure off. Yes. Because you're like, well, how can I cast out a devil? How can I lay hands on sick and see them recover? Well, it's not so much a focus on you doing it. You need the anointing. You need the Holy Ghost to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why the disciples went to uh, in, in the upper room at Pentecost and got the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the one doing the work. But your assignment, the part that you have to do, your uh, work of faith is to go. And then the signs are going to follow you. But you got to go first. You got to be convinced. You need to abide with this passage here mm -hmm. and be convinced that when I go, this is what's going to happen because Jesus said so. So until you go, mm -hmm. you're not going to experience these signs, exactly. wonders, and miracles. Mm -hmm. That is the prerequisite to the signs, wonders, and miracles is going. But again, if the devil can keep you contained and just, and I think Pastor said, um, we're so focused on maintaining mm -hmm. our good relationship with God mm -hmm. that we rather err on the, you know, we, we rather be cautious and, and super careful not to do this and whatever just so we can be good to God. But understand that it's not really being good to God because you're mm -hmm. walking in complete He called the, right the, the servant in the parable of the talents, the one who had the one talent, who mm -hmm. hid it and did not do anything. That wasn't talking about money. That was talking about spiritual responsibility. Mm -hmm. He hid his spiritual responsibility. He, he didn't do it. Wicked and slothful servant and cast him out because he did not do what he was called to do in the time frame that the master mm -hmm. was gone. We're in a time frame where the master is gone. So what are we supposed to be doing? The spiritual anointing that he's given to us, this Holy Ghost is supposed to be doing something Amen. with it and not just Amen. sitting in one place doing nothing. Dr. David said this was very key. He said, don't misunderstand the need for prayers, confessions, giving, and church attendance. It's all important, but they are no substitute for spiritual productivity. Amen. And that spiritual productivity Amen. is bearing fruit. We actually just posted on Rapture Go, which is why I need to be signed up, a devotional written by Dr. Davis talking about bearing fruit mm -hmm. and how bearing fruit unto righteousness, according to John 15, was winning souls into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So it's all connected. It's, this, is all, this was the whole point of Jesus' ministry, to build you into someone who could go out and do what he did. He said, you will do these works and greater. Amen. And that's why you need to be a part of Rapture Amen. Ministry, because our, our, our slogan, so to speak, which really is just the truth of this ministry, what we've been called to, is to train you to win that life. What? In your faith, in your family, in your uh, friendships, and in your finances. Why? So that you can go and do what Jesus mm -hmm. did. So you can take this proof and this evidence and show people, this is what Jesus did for me. This is what he's going to do for you as soon as you believe. These are the signs that are going to follow you. So just as Jesus was training up these disciples, that's what we're doing here. We're doing the work of the ministry. We're training up people. We're training victorious, conquering people who can go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, babe, I just got a sensing mm -hmm. that someone is watching this right now and saying to themselves, well, I can't go until my family gets fixed. Mm -hmm. I can't go until my body is healed. Mm -hmm. I can't go until I get my money right. I can't go because the job that I have now won't give me any free time. Let me tell you something. You have to go and you have to go now. Mm -hmm. When you go, all these things that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. God will take care of them. You have to trust that. You have to believe that. Because that is his promise. He said it in his word. Take no thought for those things. Mm -hmm. He already know. He are, that means he's already provided. You cannot take on the concerns and cares of your family. I know you love your family, but if you really love your family, you will go. Because when you go, the anointing will come upon you. The anointing will be available for the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. And the things that you need to break through and break um, loose in your life will break loose. 
and you, you just can't be afraid to go. So get up and go right now. Stop making that an, a reason or an excuse mm -hmm. to not do the things of God. Stop making that a reason and excuse for, for not coming to church and receiving the word so you can go and learn and, and live a life that is victorious. Stop making that an excuse because that means you're putting that before God. Mm -hmm. You're putting your job, you're putting your family, you're putting bills and everything else before God. That means you're saying, I don't trust you, God. When you do that, it's saying, I don't trust you, God. Make a new decision today to trust God and go. And I never read it this way before, but Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and then all these things. So seek the kingdom of God first, first. and then all these things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. You can't do it out of sequence. Seek the kingdom first. This is the kingdom, winning souls. So be trained up. Be transformed to someone who knows how to do that. You don't know how to do it? Come to a church like this. Stay connected with us. If you're out of the area, sign up for Rapture Go. Because every week, every day of this week, we are sending out information that is designed to train you, to help you to win our life. And you're going to be able to listen to the podcast of the messages that we are hearing every Sunday and Wednesday. Amen. You're going to get devotionals written by Dr. Dell and Pastor Diana Davis. You're going to get inspiration. You're going to see testimonies. Everything that you need to be transformed and trained into someone who can go ye into all the world and preach Amen. the gospel. Amen. That's what's happening here at Rapture. So we thank you for watching this week's Rapture Recap. And we'll see you on Sunday.